I'm so happy that you've chosen to take off beat, off the beaten path. Your journey to holistic health starts here. Namaste. Hi, good day and namaste. I am Juan B and you are listening to the Off B HealthCast. And in this Off B HealthCast, you will learn how to boost and maintain a strong immune system. We know health is the new currency, so we want to do everything that we can to maintain optimum health. You'll learn ways, to, being that it is getting cold, and we are approaching cold and flu season, and there is a lot of talk about this second wave of the COVID-19. We want to make sure that we have different ways and we, to protect our immune system and to make sure that we're taking the necessary precautions so that we don't catch any outside germs that will potentially harm us. So if we just break it down step by step, little by little, we want to start with the simple question, what is the immune system? Because people talk about the immune system a lot, but what is it really? In short, it's a combination of cells and tissues and organs that work together to help the body fight infections and diseases. Um, we can expand on that. The organs that are connected to our immune system are more than just like, you know, the organs that we learn about in school, the main organs that we learn about in school, the lungs. It even starts with your skin. Your skin is an organ. As a matter of fact, it's the biggest organ on your body. So the skin acts as our first level of defense and it helps to prevent germs from entering into the body. So if the first thing we do to protect our first line of defense, which is our skin, we make sure that we clean ourselves, our hands, we wash our hands, we take our showers, we make sure that we cover up when it's cold outside. We make sure that we stay warm because when our body gets cold, then our system has to work harder to fight itself, to fight off the germs that enter into our body. So our skin is our first line of defense, right? So the next line of defense, we will have our mucous membranes. These are the moist inner linings of some of the organs in the body cavities. So pretty much they produce mucus to trap and fight germs. And some examples of our mucous membrane, we would go from our nostrils to our lungs, our mouth to our anus. We go inside our eyelids, uh, we go in our ears. Um, let's go to our, from our, you know, vagina to our uterus for our women. And for the men, it's a bunch of urogenital systems in men. And some of these can be found in women. So it just basically like our nose, our ears, our mouth, all of these type of things. They contain mucous mem membranes to help to fight the, der the germs that try to attack us. Second line of defense, mucous membrane. Third line of defense, we have our white blood cells. So if you go to the doctor and you just so happen to have to take a blood test and they run a few tests on them and one of the tests they would probably run is your white blood cell count. And they might say, that your white blood cell count is too low. If the white blood cell count is too low, you're more prone to sickness, disease, and infection because our white blood cells, they're specifically to, designed to trap and fight germs so that we are protected from disease and infection. So we wanna make sure that we keep our white blood cell count up. In the last line of defense, and they get past your skin, these germs, these bad, bad germs, get past your skin and they get past through your mucous membrane. And even if they infiltrate your white blood cell count, we still have our organs. The organs that are a part of our lymph system are the ones that help to, well, reflect our immune system. The thymus, the spleen, the tonsils, our lymph nodes, lymph vessels, and our bone marrow. All of these do have white blood cell count in them. And these are important because they carry white blood cell counts and the, and the white blood cell count is what helps to fight off disease and infection. So you have four chances to make sure that you do not 
come across this any colds, any flus, any diseases, any coronaviruses, you have four chances to make sure that you do not come in contact with any germ such as and the likes of. So we want to make sure that we can take advantage of all four layers of protection so that we don't fall prey to germs that will actually harm us. And so when any and all of these immunes are compromised, so is our immune system. Any and all of these layers of protection are compromised, so is our immune system. So we know what, what comes with our immune system. We know that we have our skin, we have our mucous membranes, we also have our white blood cell count, and we have our lymph system. So we're gonna put it all together, how does it work? So there's more to our immune system than just working to keep the colds and the viruses and infections that way. We're gonna learn a new word today. We may have learned it before, but we're going to bring it back to our remembrance. The word is antigens. These are foreign substances that enter the body and when they enter the body, your immune system works to get rid of them or neutralize them. They will get rid of it if it's too bad. If the, if the germ absolutely will not neutralize, they'll get rid of them. But if, they, if it's neutralized, then we can the germs can work on it to help build immunity for the next germ like it, if that makes sense. So some, are, some of these antigens, like I said, are allowed to stay in the body and some aren't. It just depends on the severity of the antigen. So if we want to use an example, we can use the example of a cancer germ. It can't stay in the body or a cancer cell. It can't stay in the body because it's deadly. It must go. Our immune system is not going to, if it's up and properly functioning, it's not going to allow this cancer cell to remain in our body because it is way too deadly. There are not things that, or other germs that can be built, can build any immunity to this cancer cell. But if we have the flu or the flu germ, then our body can, be, can build immunity or antibodies against it. So people can still get the flu, but it lessens the chances of people getting the flu. And plus there are so many different strains of the flu that it's hard for our body to actually keep up and maintain the roll call of every single flu that enters into our body, especially if our immune system is compromised in any way. Because, you know, like the flu, different strands of the same germ. We, that's why we want to make sure that we keep our immune system strong and healthy so that we don't have to worry about whether or not our body can maintain the strength that it needs to decide whether or not this flu germ or this cancer germ is to, can, can stay or not. So what does it look like when the immune system is compromised? And there can be something from something as small as a cold. That immune system is not compromised because you are now coughing, you're sneezing, sneezing, you probably can't breathe. And that's just a small, small example of having your immune system compromised like you always have a cold. Like I know people that are always coughing or always sneezing and it's not allergy season <laughs> and it's not their allergies let me just say that because you know like people have allergies in the fall and they have allergies that act up in the spring so I'm gonna say that they're always coughing and they're always sneezing and always have a tissue because they have a poor immune system even if you have digestive issues it's like if you always have diarrhea or if you have a lot of gas or constipation, that is a sign of an immune system that's not functioning to high efficiency. If you, if your wounds, if you like get a cut and it takes forever to heal. I had that situation happen to me one time, like earlier in the year. I cut myself by accident, of course, because I love myself. And usually, you know, like I can be a clutch sometimes. So it's not, it's not abnormal for me to cut myself especially while I'm cooking and preparing food this particular time I cut myself and it wouldn't heal like I would have I kept a band-aid on it for like two weeks I'm like it usually you know within a week you know you kind of see some progress and I didn't see any progress within these two weeks and then eventually I just it just it got infected I had a very I didn't even realize that I had a poor immune system 
and I needed to take some herbs because I'm really big on taking herbs. So I, I did take some herbs, the antiviral blend that we do have on our website. I took that for a couple of days. Well, I took it for a week, but I, I took it in a couple of days. It cleared up, but that was just a pure example of how my immune system was compromised because my cut didn't heal like it was supposed to. You know, being as I'm a mom and have a family life and children, husband and things like that. I just didn't pay it any mind. I didn't think that, hey, okay, maybe I need to build my immune system because this is taking too long to heal. So, but the infection is really what caught my attention, but I'm glad I was able to correct it. And I was able to build my immune system. Just speaking of that, if it's not just had to have the wound that wouldn't heal, the cut that wouldn't heal, it was also, it got infected. So if you are having infections, even as small as getting a cut and it getting infected, that is also a sign of a compromised immune system. So we want to make sure that we even take a look at that. And even if you're, well, the next thing, if you're tired all the time, it sounds like to me, we need to boost up on some herbs that's going to help you with maintaining a strong immune system. So yeah, constant tiredness, people who have autoimmune disorders, there are quite a few auto autoimmune disorders that have been around that and it's like, it's kind of like a disease like diabetes. That's an autoimmune disorder. These are signs of a compromised immune system. If you have blood disorders, anemia, it starts with your immune system. So we need to make sure that we keep ourselves up on a daily basis because any small slip will definitely impact us um, in the future, if not in the near future, but definitely in the long run. So, and lastly, if you have inflammatory issues, like if you have, you know, organs that are inflamed or if you have joints that are always inflamed, like if they hurt and if you have muscles that's always aching and hurting, we need to really consider taking steps to build our immune system. Don't worry, because I will definitely give you a few tips on how you can build your immune system because it's not as hard as you might think. It's actually really simple. It just takes new habits, the creation of new habits, because it doesn't mean that we just have to just stop and just do everything right then and there all together and then you know we become a new person overnight no we have to make sure that we implement small things small things in our daily routine every day to better us and that's how we create new habits so let's talk about these new habits that we're going to create to build our immune system less stress stress less I know that sometimes we go to work and we have coworkers and we have a boss who's stressful, who stresses us out and things like that, but we cannot allow them to stress us. We have to have woosaw moments. We have to rub our ears sometimes. And that's a bad boys reference if you guys didn't know what I was talking about. Um, but we need to make sure that we keep our stress level down because stress, if we stress about our family life, if we stress about our work life, we stress about our finances, even if we stress about this coronavirus, even stressing about getting or trying not to get the coronavirus, that is also aiding and weakening the immune system. So we got to make sure that we keep our stress levels down. Make sure that you're sleeping seven to eight hours a day. Most of the adults need about seven to eight hours a day. Children need up to 10 hours a day. And it doesn't mean that you're all you're sleeping the entire time. I haven't met one child that slept. 10 hours <laughs> in one night because I know that our children do not sleep 10 hours and we have little ones and but I do allow them to rest for at least 10 hours they do sleep about eight hours but they do rest for at least two of those hours and um, make sure that your children are getting rest because when you do rest it gives your body time to recharge and build up your immune system so that's why you know when people tell you when you're not feeling good to lay down because your body needs rest it needs time to reboot and recharge next thing we can do is we can exercise for 15 to 30 minutes a day i'm really big on that because it doesn't take much you know just think about it break it down 15 minutes is two five minutes like and before you know it you done walk 15 to 30 minutes and this podcast is probably going to be about 30 minutes so by the time you start the podcast and by the time you end it there's your daily walk so make sure that you get in your exercise like you can run low impact you can walk 30 minutes a day so that we can keep our 
blood circulating, our heart flowing and our blood circulating <laughs> properly. And then we can just, you know, keep our body strong, strengthen our lungs, strengthen so that we can maintain this um, strong immune system. We want to make sure that we eat electric foods. We want to make sure we eat nutrient rich foods. And some of these foods can be leafy greens, um, kale, kalu is really good. Uh, let's see, lettuce, but every, you know, everything but the like um, iceberg lettuce doesn't really have very much nutritional value. But the other lettuce, the, the musculine, I, I never pronounced that right, but the bib lettuce, you know, the rest of these type of lettuces along with the kale and the arugula and the microgreens. These are really good nutrient rich electric foods that we can eat. That's great for our immune system. And we also have avocados. Avocados is like a superfood, so an avocado a day keeps the doctor away. Okay, maybe not, but it's really good for you. Apples are good too, rich in fiber, rich in nutrients, berries, quinoa, and things like that. So we have a lot of food, different type of foods that we can eat to help build our immune system if it's already down, but boost it if it's already up. And we can also minimize smoking, drinking, and eating junk food. I know that a lot of us like to do the party scene on the weekends and drink a lot, <laughs> but we may, we want to keep in mind every time that we even drink a cup of alcohol, a glass of alcohol, that we are damaging our immune system. A glass of wine is good for heart health, so I'm told. So that may be good, but you know, the hard liquor, you know, the vodka, the what else do we have? I'm like, I'm not really into alcohol a lot. What else do we have? Rum, um, cognac. What else do we got? Okay, so like those type of things, they won't be really good for you. They're not really good for you. Like they are extremely damaging to our, your immune system and drinking excessive beer. That's not good either. And ex it be, like a lot of, let me just make it clear that a lot of times we do think about saying that we can't have it at all. And I'm not saying that you can't have these things at all. The, the If you want to smoke here and there, if you want to drink here and there, if you want your junk food here and there, I'm not saying that you can't have it. I'm saying that we want to we want to keep it in moderation because because it doesn't add any nutritional value to our life or our body, our profile. So we want to keep it at a minimum. And things we didn't know about immune system. Let me just go to this next topic things that we didn't know go about we didn't know about our immune system so you may know it but it is a fun fact the majority of your your immune system is in your gut which also happens to be the first place that your body processes nutrients 70 percent to be exact so basically 70 percent of your immune system is in your gut so if your gut ain't right your body ain't right you feel off and then that's where dis eases come in or diseases however you'd like to put it so if we want to rebuild our gut or rebuild our immune system you can fast for three days to regenerate your entire immune system that means no eating anything for three days or or you know but water only thing that you can eat is water but some some of us you know like me i don't really like to go a whole day without eating so i would opt for option two which is taking one week to three weeks to build my immune system. I have a pretty strong immune system, so I think that maybe if sometimes I feel like it might be getting a little compromised, might get a little sniffle here or there, um, I would probably take my antiviral herbs because I'm really big on um, herbs, as I said before, um, and probably take that for about one to three weeks. And boom, I have a stronger immune system already. So let's talk about who is at risk for their immune system being compromised. And some of this thing, some of these topics or these ideas or these statements, um, some of the things I say you may have heard already, but I like to speak in repetition because sometimes you may not have caught it the first time or it may have sounded different to, to you in the first time that I said it. So that's why I have to come back and say it again because the way that we learn as creatures of habit, we learn in repetition. Let's talk about it. The people that are at risk for a compromised immune system are the people with poor eating habits. Junk food, white food, dairy, too much meat, poor eating habits, people who have stressful jobs and lifestyles, 
your family is stressing you out, your boss is stressing you out, you know, like, these are the people who are at risk of having their immune system compromised, people who don't get enough sleep. So that's why, you know, I'm big on the whole sleep thing because we need our body to rebuild, reboot while we sleep. And also people with existing health conditions like diabetes, cancer, heart disease, and things like that. So if you are currently suffering from any of these types of diseases, then your immune system is already compromised and you will be more susceptible to flu viruses and things of that nature. We can see our immune system weakening, even from the smallest things, mucus production, just the, you know, no sniffling, you know, it's kind of hard to breathe today. So I might need to do something different. Like you might even feel mucus build up in the back of your throat. So, you know, having to clear your throat a lot, you, you you might want to do something about that. Drink some more water, um, sleep a little longer, make sure you take your herbs, drink some elderberry tea. Take some elderberry syrup. If you're having a lot of infections, you might want to do those things too. If you're having digestive issues. Fun fact, elderberry is really good for digestive issues. Like if people, you know, have just have problems with having bowel movements, um, these are, elderberry is really good for helping your, you know, people who like maybe have like have IBS or things like that. Elderberry is good for that. So you might want to take a look into getting some. We do have those on our website, by the way. And that is offbeellc.com. O-F-F-B-E-L-L-C.com. So ways to protect yourself against the potential second COVID outbreak. So it doesn't mean that it's coming, but there is a lot of talk of this second COVID outbreak. And we want to make sure that we are protected. And you don't want to wait till you get the virus or get sick to do something about it you want to make sure that you take these preventative measures so make sure you eat your fruits and vegetables very very good for you and add to your fruits and vegetables quinoa that's also good for you um make sure you take your antiviral herbs daily um some antiviral herbs can are included uh with elderberry echinacea ginger is really good astragalus root a gin and garlic And we have all of that in one capsule on our website, offbllc.com. And we also have elderberry, whole elderberry, so that you can make your own elderberry tea and syrup. So make sure you drink your elderberry tea or take your elderberry syrup. With the tea, you drink about three cups a day sometimes. If you'd like, you can probably start out just one first when you wake up and one right before you go to sleep. And with the syrup, you can take about one to three tablespoons a day as well and so we we always tend to talk about you know what herbs that we can take and what foods that we can eat but did you know that you can also help to boost your immune system by just carrying certain crystals with you so clear quartz is a good crystal to carry with you to boost your immune system amethyst aquamarine and calcite you can also find some of these crystals in jewelry form because we're about our holistic lifestyle on our website as well offbllc.com make sure you check that out our herbs our food our crystals but there are also other things that you can do like listening to healing frequencies and if you're not familiar with healing frequencies or frequencies that we would listen to to boost your immune system it's basically types of hertz the hertz are you know different levels of vibration that you would listen to and it has an effect on your body whether it's something to there are there are actually frequencies to cure cancer there are there are frequencies to help you sleep there are uh, frequencies to help you get to different dimensions you know it's a lot of stuff out there but we're just going to talk about the ones that abuse boost your immune system so 432 hertz if you even put that in youtube it's plenty of youtubers that have set up 432 hertz on their page so that you can listen to that. Just listen to it as you fall asleep at night and give your body the opportunity to rebuild and reboot. 285 hertz, that's also good. Find that on YouTube. 741 hertz, that is another good hertz frequency to listen to to boost your immune system. Make sure, number one, get your rest because if you do all of these things that were mentioned throughout this podcast and you do not get your rest, it will all be in vain.
We need to give our body time to heal itself. And a lot of times it, it, heal, it it's able to heal itself at night while we sleep our seven to eight hours. And most importantly, make sure that you listen to your body because your body will tell you what's going on, even at the smallest thing. Don't ignore the small things that happen with your body. Make sure you listen to your body. So that's all we got. That's all we got for today. We've learned quite a few ways to boost our immune system. We've learned what immune system is. If you haven't, if you haven't learned that before, what our immune system is, what are or, the organs that consist of our immune system. And we even learned a new word called antigens today. Make sure you go teach that word to somebody else, okay? Because we want to share the knowledge and not keep it to ourselves. So until next time, make sure that you get your rest. You be well. Don't stress and do your best. And until next time, peace. Love you.